there's a myth going round town that when you get older you just sit down and start rocking just rocking in a way that's true if you know what i mean just take a look at the senior scene well it's rocking my name is jerry passmore we're gonna be talking about senior housing and when i think of senior housing uh, our guest is the number one person that comes to my mind that has been a, a real uh, advocate for senior housing, as well as seniors in general, a variety of service areas. And we'll learn more about that as we talk to our guests. But uh, this, this is a critical topic uh, to the community of different living arrangements and transitioning to different types of living arrangements as we grow older. And I'm happy to be the host to interview Jack Chestnut, who is the director of community contacts. Jack, thank you. Is that correct? <laughs> yes, that's, that's correct. Thank <laughs> On that, because I know you're, you've got other titles as well over the years, but uh, it, it's great to have you on, because a lot of people uh, really don't, don't know the many years your, your commitment you've, you've given to this county on improving senior housing in relationship to Carol Woods, and, as well as in the broader community, and, and as well as Carol Woods' concern. But anyway, thank you for being here. And uh, my understanding, you've been with Carol Woods for how many years? Sarah? 30 years. 30 years. Right. And it's been existing for 30 years, is that correct? Yes, we opened up in August of 1979. On that. And uh, we talked earlier that you were the first, this when you make sure the audience realizes that, that you were the first employee of Carol Woods, my understanding, that's yes, what we said. I was, a, I was the very f first employee of Carol Woods, and uh, to give you a little history of when we first opened up, uh, we had to open up before Carol Woods was ready because residents that were moving into Carol Woods had sold their homes. So we had to open up, and when we <laughs> opened up, at our front door was a sheet of plywood with a chain run to it with a padlock on it, and that was the <laughs> entrance to Welcome to Carol Woods in 1979. Oh, that's really... Uh Interesting. It sounds like the same thing we did with the recent senior center. You, people want to get in before it's ready to get in. But in your case, uh, people made commitments and their homes had to go somewhere else and it was to Carol Woods where they were supposed to be uh, uh, having their, their uh, new uh, residence. But that, that's really interesting. What, uh, uh, on Carol Woods, was that, that's a private nonprofit group that established Carol Woods yes, back it, to the it, beginning? It was started the discussions of Carol Woods started with a men's discussion group, Sandy McClamrock being one of those, John mm -hmm. Harkness and others in the community, talking about where they could retire. And so they asked the secretary to make a list of places where they might retire. And when the list came back, there wasn't anything in Chapel Hill for them to retire to. And so they got their heads together and said, well, what mm -hmm. can we do to have a retirement community here? And so they, they worked, they got volunteers that donated money towards the, the assessment, needs assessment for retirement community in the area. Mm -hmm. And from that, it was step one, step two, and Carol Wood's dream came true on uh, Weaverdary Road. Yes, uh, it, it is set up as a nonprofit corporation, correct? That's, right. That's correct. And local folks that are on the board. Yeah. Uh, a question is always, uh, I've always been intrigued by, uh, to ask you, and I've never asked anyone else, was how, uh, how did they arrive at the name Carol Woods? Do you, do you know? Yes, I do. Okay, you're the man. Okay. Secrets out. In, in the seal of the University of North Carolina, right before Serpent, there's Carol. Uh -huh. And we were in the woods. Carol Woods. So Miss <laughs> Carol Woods does not live in Carol Woods. Oh, I, we were wondering, was the person named after a, no. a donor or something? <laughs> so, so they got the name Carol from the University uh -huh. Seal and Woods, Carol Woods. So that's how it okay. got its name. We do get letters saying Miss Carol Woods. Uh, I can uh, imagine, yeah. Because I was thinking, of this, is this a person or how yeah. arrived at? Because I know on the, um, the logo has like, like cones, cedar cones or something, yeah, whatever. A, a All cone. that, pine cones. Yes. Uh, on that, but thank you for answering that question. I knew you would know. I've been, I've been wanting to ask somebody that for some time. Yes. 
<laughs> on that. The, but you say the reason why they started, because there was nothing, I'm sure, in, 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 in Orange in, County, was it, at that time? Yeah, in Orange County, or very few on the s southern east coast. And uh, Sandy McClamrock always said that we're going to build the best CCRC on the southern east coast, and we have. So we've that's, that's wonderful in terms of, of, of that. Well, before we get, we can come back to Carol Woods a little bit, because I know you, you've been there for, for 30 years, but uh, tell us a little about you as a person in terms of uh, how, how did you get here, you, in terms of in Orange County area and uh, back 30 years ago or, or beyond. What's kind of share some of your own personal well, I, history? Well, I was raised, I live in Hillsboro now. Uh -huh. I was raised in Hillsboro, Ohio, in, on a farm. And at, after high school, I went into the military. Uh -huh. While I was in the mil military, uh, I married my wife, Mary. Uh, uh -huh. M-E-R-R-Y. Uh, it was like, a, was it a Merry Christmas? Like <laughs> Merry Christmas. Her birthday is on the 24th of December. What? Maybe that's why they call her, call yeah. her named her Mary. Huh? And she makes that really well at, on her birthday and Christmas. That's always been a, an issue with her, not to have anything wrapped in Christmas present uh -huh. for her birthday. So that's, that's clear. <laughs> Good. So we, we have two daughters and one granddaughter named Cameron. And every chance I get, I take her to Walt Disney World and and we have a great time and we have a great relationship and, and all the girls, both of the girls live here in the area so we get to see That's them quite great. often. And I assume, I know one of your interests is fishing, so I assume you take them fishing? Do so you no. have an interest in fishing? No, I don't take them fishing. I took them to University of Lake once uh -huh. <laughs> and when you ask three and five year olds to be quiet in a boat, that ends all interest in fishing. So <laughs> they have never been fishing since. Uh, well, you've taken to a pond maybe. Yeah, take uh, Along the shore. But after I got out of the military, I got a job working for a company called Service Master Hospital Corporation. That uh -huh. really started, well, I would say, my career working in hospital and facility services management. Uh -huh. And I was in St. Mary's in Kansas City, Ponca City, Oklahoma, Alexandria Hospital in Louisiana, and then transferred to UNC Hospital. Well, after a few years at UNC Hospital, they wanted me to transfer back to Louisiana to another hospital, uh -huh. but my girls were in the first grade, and so we decided we would not move. Stay here. And that was, I found that out two weeks after I bought my house, but we just dealt with it. And so I started my own uh, company, Knocking on Doors, and how I happened to get to Carol Woods. I, I like chili dogs, and there used to be a, Carol Woods used to have an office building the Fisher Fisher Realtor on Franklin Street and a model apartment was built inside that building. Well, I would go to Sonic restaurant and have a milkshake mm -hmm. and a chili dog, and so one day I th thought I would go over there and see what Carol Woods was about. Well, when I saw the, the plan of Carol Woods, I thought this would, this would be something I would really be interested in because it kind of related to the service I did in the hospitals. So I pestered Ed Hess uh, for about a year and he finally gave up and gave me a job and uh, went to Carol Woods and we, we started opening and that's, that's right. You mentioned something in those early days going back to that it was, you, you opened early so therefore you had to ask some of your, your, your residents to be involved with, with uh, different things that had to be done since you were the only staff at the time or getting ready to hire I, other folks, the residents had to step up the plate and, and who came early Yes. to do different tasks. What were they doing? Two things happened. One, we got about 5,000 books donated when they started moving in. And they started <laughs> stacking up in a large room. And the next thing that happened was plants, donated plants started coming by the hundreds also. And finally, we asked for help. And one of the residents said, well, I've set up libraries before. We'll set up the library. So residents set up the library, and they've, the residents of Carol Woods have been managing that library since day one. Same thing happened with the grounds. We had uh, Ruth Ross, she was, I think, the president of the Garden Society of Chapel Hill, uh -huh. and she helped us plant the plants. And at that time, the residents decided we would not trim our shrubs to be round balls or pyramids or anything else, uh -huh. that we would look natural. And so we have like Carol Woods. Yeah, we would have a natural habitat, and we're also a bird sanctuary, so uh, can't clear out the woods or anything. 
And on and on, we had a uh, police officer that was retired there, and he could help set up security. And he actually had a radio that I, him and I could communicate back and forth. I lived in Durham, and we could talk back and forth what was going on. If it, there was a tornado watch or something, I could call him and say, get everybody ready, I'm on my way in. And, and so, but what happened with that is what makes us different than most any other retirement community. Because our residents are involved in everything. The decorating committee, they have sales, what's called cash and carry. They generate money for the, for the interior decorating, all the amenities and flowers mm -hmm. and pictures, and decide where they'll go. If a collar of carpet's going to be changed in the central buildings, the residents that live on that floor, they decide what color they're going to have. So it makes it entirely... A lot of empowerment for your yes, residents. So, and it's great. And it works out really well. And, and you see uh, the Energy Committee, the Housekeeping Committee, the Grounds Committee. The very first committee is not existing anymore. It was a mud committee. Because when Carol Woods first <laughs> opened, we had nothing but mud. And so the committee... The mud committee had gotten clean well, mud off the that, The first one, Carol Woods opened up 30 years ago, mm -hmm. is um, how many residents could you, um, would take at that time versus now? Uh, 240. And as they, we were getting apartments ready as they moved in. Mm -hmm. The hallway may not have the carpet in it. We may not have a sidewalk there, but their apartment was ready, except for the drapes. Had tre terrible time getting drapes, and I, we were having 50 people move in, and, and no drapes. And one lady told me, said, well, I'll be checking in the hotel until you get my drapes, and I'll send you the bill. I said, well, that sounds like a deal to me. So <laughs> it was really interesting. The residents were excited, and it was, it new, was actually a lot home. of fun. Yeah. And, and it has stayed that way. It really That's has. good. I'm sure you've, you've called. Over the years, uh, I, I, I know you've had a variety of duties, assignments at Carewoods. Share some of those, some of that kind of hit you. I know you've done a variety of things. Uh, okay. Being the first employee. The very first job I had was just housekeeping manager. That's the only thing Ed Hess would give me. So that's uh -huh. okay. Then the guy, when it snowed, the grounds people, they did not want, the grounds manager did not want to deal with that. So with snow. Uh -huh. that they had me take over grounds. They didn't want to deal with transportation, so I got the transportation. They did. <laughs> so, so I ended of, up with housekeeping, grounds, maintenance, laundry, security, and transportation. So you've done every, each of the years. different divisions, areas that are now yes. kind of major divisions now as it's yes. grown over time. Yes, they are. That's, uh, that's, that's interesting. The uh, transportation, what does that entail? Well, Carewoods has a uh, shuttle bus that goes downtown three, day, three times a day. Mm -hmm to take residents any place in the Chapel Hill area that they would want to go. Then we have special trips to South Point and Northgate and different things. So there's a shuttle bus that runs all the time. Uh, and then the special concert series and, and things of that nature we shuttle bus to. On it. Okay, let's switch out, off from okay. I know you got Carewoods, your, your basic experience, many years of experience here at Carewoods, and uh, you've learned a lot. I know you have an interest in senior housing not just the issue of Carewoods, but the broader community, uh, trying to improve uh, new housing arrangements, promoting that, and know on the various boards we've been connected to. But uh, share with us some of your, your, your interest in, in the broader thing of housing, the kinds of housing that uh, you're, you've been interested in and trying to promote in our community. I know Carewoods is a CCRC. And for our viewers, what is that? <laughs> Continuing Care Retirement Community, which means we have all le levels of care. That's good. From independent to skilled. The skilled care. And I know you, you've worked in the community about trying to, to look at other options that we're trying to promote and make people aware of. So what are some of those other options? Well, let me first tell you where it came from. In the Master Aging Plan that Orange County was developing in 1999, that's when basically I had I got the job that I have now. The Carol Woods Board, Pat Sprague, the president, wanted Carol Woods to be more involved in trying to meet unmet needs for seniors in the community. The broader community. The broader community. Mm -hmm. And so that, in the Master Aging Plan, there was a section on housing. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd been working at Carol Woods for 20 years at that time, and I understood the aging in place if you live in an apartment. So I, 
had gained 20 years of experience knowing as a person transitions and needs grab bars and needs different sure. things, I understood what type of senior housing would mean for a person to, to stay there. And also, uh, I was on the HUD-202 board, Adlai Walters, that's senior housing. That's where a person only pays 30% of their income. Sure, that's a low-income housing low for income persons housing. who have certain income levels can and, get. And mm -hmm. uh, so I was interested in senior housing. And then, I, then what happened, Hillsborough, the township of Hillsborough, started getting a lot of requests for senior housing. Mm -hmm. 55 plus communities, CCRC, rental housing, assisted living facilities. Well, I knew what all those things meant. And so the advisory board and myself met with the Hillsborough Town Board and basically helped them understand what assisted living is. And assisted living, many times, you don't have to have a licensed nurse there if you don't want to in an unlicensed assisted living. Sure. The licensed you do. So trying to get people to understand what a CCRC was and, and different things of that nature. Because I know I, in terms of the board, you're talking about the Orange County Advisory Board on Aging, I right. think we developed some, some basic guidelines for them to consider as they approve different projects for their town. Right. And uh, I think that was a big issue. And they've got several going on now. I think what's, that as a result of that, that's yeah. becoming, I think, currently a big boom of, of senior yeah. housing around the Hillsborough area. Well, they've also built a 55, the same developer that's building in Hillsborough has built a 55-plus community in Mebane. Mm -hmm. And all that is is a house where you basically uh, rent and everything's taken care of and you can go do whatever you want. They don't provide meals or anything. There's a swimming pool there. It's strictly a 55 plus. Plus independent, independent. Uh, freestanding, and free detached homes. And so and, but what's developed, no matter what you do, you cannot build enough facilities. And so the, the newer models, and there are some old models in, in New York that's been having what's called a naturally occurring retirement community mm -hmm. where a high rise would have a lot of people living there and over time they would age in place sure and so they they came up with the concept of helping those people stay there mm -hmm. and they had to do a lot of modifications well what I hope to do is to try to encourage like they're going through some remodeling and things of Glen Lennox you don't have to be an elderly person to have a friendly built home, sure. user friendly home. And so the same thing if you're carrying a bag of groceries and you have a child on your arm, having a lever handle at the front door to help you get in is really, applies in both cases, young or old. Having lever handles on the sinks and things. And those, having wider doorways, because you've got to get these strollers in, you've got to get the wheelchairs in. So I call it more user friendly communities and I hope when they are developing in Glen Lennox, they do user-friendly homes instead of homes where there's a lot of steps and they don't take into some of the universal design principles that's, yeah. that's been used and developed at the I, um, state. I know uh, the, the last passage of the Master Aging Plan in uh, 2007, oh, the, the theme, actual theme was, was uh, building aging-friendly communities. It could be your neighborhood, it could be the broader community, uh, but as well as communities could be businesses, or business could be looked at, is it designed, you know, uh, their business design where older adults can get in, the shelf level, picking things up, to see things in, in displays and things like that. A lot of people don't realize that, that uh, the way we design things, uh, both in business setting or even a home setting, as you just mentioned, uh, it should be uh, in such a fashion older adults can age in place in their community. And it's catching on the National Home Builders Association. They have developed a aging in place uh, class for if you're a construction person that you can go to those classes and you will understand the principles of aging in place. But does, again, I want to emphasize it does doesn't have to be anything about aging. It could be user friendly. I like the word user friendly more than anything else. Mm -hmm. uh, that what works for a senior works for 
for a young person and a young child. From that point, I know you've been involved in many, many groups, and of course each one has a different focus. I know you've different clubs, civic groups you've been involved with, and some of the special interest projects you may have been associated with as a result of those connections. What are some of those? Well, one, I was involved with the, uh, the, the design of the new children's center at Carroll Woods. It's not new now, it's about uh -huh. three years old. And uh, I had um, worked with the YMCA, I was on the YMCA board, and the YMCA decided that they would manage the children's center. So the YMCA, on Carroll Woods property, uh -huh. we, have, we have a children's center, we have 15 slots for, for staff, and the rest of the slots of the 64 is available for the community at large. And it's been up and running for about four years, and it's, it's doing really well. Um, That's wonderful. So in asking, this is really a benefit for um, some of your employees that might have young children that they can bring their child to this, basically to work, but not really at work, but right there at work to drop their child off. And, and, uh, and residents really enjoy it. I, I love to see a resident go over there. We have one resident goes, and it's makeup day, and they, they put her hat on her and scarf on her, and, and they dress her all up how they want her to huh. dress. And the residents, and, and then they, the, they have lunch with the residents on Wednesday in the Carolina room, and that's always fun to see. And the children and the residents talking back and forth. And so that program has uh, really been nice for the residents uh -huh. also. Yeah, I know uh, you've been involved with the, um, the Friends of the Senior Centers, too. What, uh, yeah. you know, you've been involved with so many things. These are some of the issues, not just related to the housing, but the broader issues of seniors. Yes, I've worked with the uh, Seymour Center for about eight years. I had a yard sale to help in the fundraiser and, and manage that for them. Um, Saturday night we ha of this week, we have the Las Vegas night at the Central Orange Senior Center in uh, Hillsboro. Uh -huh. That will be a lot of fun, and that's a major fundraiser. Uh, that's why they got money to help buy the piano, the, the pool table, the Wii, the widescreen TV. So uh, to make it a fun place when you go in and something uh -huh. to do. So I've been involved in that. Uh, as you know, I was on the Affordable Housing Board. Uh, for two reasons, looking at senior housing, but also affordable housing for staff. Uh, and I hope they finish the, the, the Habitat program on Sunrise Road that they've reserved some it's land that. for. So that well, a lot of people don't realize that the housing is very expensive in Orange County. Um, uh, and yeah. that it's to make it a lot of folks work here, then they have to leave and go outside the county, whether it's Burt Pierce. Person County or Chatham or whatever it may be because they can't afford the, the well, housing costs. The Habitat program and the Land Trust program, uh, the Land Trust uh, built the condominiums at Meadowmont. So in those apartments only cost around $115,000 where and across the street there's $600,000 condominiums and they're right there by Harris State, they're on the bus line, it's a great deal. In relationship to housing, you can't separate housing settings you know, in terms of independent living and so forth, is a recent, uh, not fairly recent, in the last three or four years, I know you've been involved with uh, senior care regarding the right. day health program. And that is so connected with p helping people to age in their home and, and able to can still connect to the community. Can you explain just, just a small thing on that point, I think, people can okay. be aware of. In Orange County, um, a number of years ago, Carol Woods, UNC Hospital, and the Department of Aging, out of the Master Aging Plan, one of the major priorities was to have an adult day health program in Northern Orange County. We have Charles House in the southern part, but we needed something like that in Northern Orange County. And so, it is attached to the new senior center, and the new senior center is attached to the sportsplex. So as a person ages, well, we have some young people that, that come there. I'm saying young 40. I guess as sure. I get older, people look younger. <laughs> <I> <laughs> younger all do to me. <laughs> that come there, and their loved ones are able to, to uh, drop them off. They're in a safe, secure environment. They get their meals. They get the exercise. They get get to socialize with each other. They're not isolated home alone. And so that's, 
that's what the adult day health program is about. We it's sort a, of one of the uh, housing, going back to the concept we're dealing with, housing options. You know, this is where they live in a home, but where they don't provide meals, like you would in some places, like assisted living provides meals and staff, or this is where family members care for them or are connected with a granny flat or whatever you call it, connected. Right. They need some, some type of supervision care during the day and being that's able right. to leave and go somewhere and then come back home and still stay at home without going to a, like you say, a higher level of, of uh, care, like a assisted living. Because it can slow down that process to a higher level of care and a higher cost. It can slow that down a great deal, many oh, yeah. years. It's definitely less expensive. Yes, it is. And uh, of course, as well as, uh, I find that many families love their, 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 their relatives and want to, want to keep them connected to the community as long as possible, as well as the sheer expense, because like Carol Woods, is, it does require a sizable income or in terms of being able to get into Carol Woods because of the, man, the amount of services that are provided, as well as some of the other folk, other places that you had mentioned earlier. Uh, and, just, and that was one of the motivations on, on the, the Board of Directors master plan for Carol Woods is to look at the unmet needs in the community because we know that there's people that uh, couldn't afford to come to Carol Woods, have waited too long, just don't want to come to Carol Woods, many reasons mm -hmm. that they still have needs and anything that Carol Woods could do to try to help that. I know on the adult day, for example, Carol Woods donated $175,000 in the building of the new adult day sure. so people wouldn't be forced to higher level of care before they were needed. That's, I mean, that's a wonderful contribution part of Carol Woods. I'm sure you, you've had a lot to do with Carol Woods and Carol Woods being, uh, being uh, the first employee, uh, being reaching out to the broader community. And I personally, as director of the Department of Aging, appreciate both you as well as Carol Woods uh, has have contributed to this community without a doubt in terms of housing needs as well as a variety of other uh, issues that, that you've taken on and, and trying to make this a better place for older persons to live. Um, you, ha you have any future goals for us? That you things you want to take on in the future? Well, the, the two things is the uh, uh, we need a HUD 202 in the Northern uh -huh. Orange, and uh -huh. I've worked, I've talked with the Hillsborough Town Board and the County Commissioners, and the uh, man the managers at uh, in the county, and that that is the next thing that I will be uh, working on. Trying to push, and, and then trying to help. We need to develop this naturally occurring retirement communities where people can stay in their communities as and get as services. Possible. Different areas. Yes, different areas. That's great. Jack, I know you have, a few, you have a future out there still in senior housing, but thank you so much. We're out of time, but uh, thank you very much to kind of give us a rundown on senior housing in general, as well as your own personal commitment to this. Thank you for, for making a difference in our community. I thoroughly I personally appreciate it so much. Well, thank you for having me here, and I appreciate all the work you do also. Thank you. There's a myth going around town That when you get older, you just sit down and start rocking Just rocking in a way that's true, if you know what I mean Just take a look at the senior scene Well, it's rockin' Yeah, it's rockin' We're pullin' our weight